Big Daddy here, and today we're going to take a look at Peppermint 8. So let's get started. So Peppermint 7 was a fan favorite of a lot of people for being lightweight, quick, and just overall usable. It just worked. So Peppermint 8 was released last week, and I figured I would check it out. I really never ran Peppermint 7, so I'm kind of new to this area. So Peppermint 8 is based off of 1604. It uses the XFCE window manager and the XFCE panel along inside of the LXDE environment. So normally when you see a hybrid system where there's multiple items in it, you'll see the open box window manager, but they've chosen to use the XFCE window manager and I think it works out pretty well. So you get your traditional panel at the bottom. You'll have your clock, keyboard layout, system tray, and window switcher. Then you'll have a traditional uh, task manager to show you all of your open programs and your launchers. And the highlight of the panel is always the whisker menu. So the whisker menu is a really fast customizable menu that you can pretty much make it anything you want it to be. So right now this is their take on the whisker menu. They've put their own settings into it, change things, a few things around uh, to make it the peppermint menu. As far as programs are concerned, there is not a lot of programs installed, although there looks like there is, because they utilize ICE, which is a web-based layout uh, wrapper for uh, websites. So it looks like it's a program. It acts like a program on your system, but it's actually just a website running in a background, either Chromium, Firefox, whatever you choose it to be. By default, it's a Chromium because Firefox is not installed. Chromium is the default web browser for Peppermint. So, for example, under games, you have all of these games that look like they're installed and they act like they're installed, but they're actually websites wrapped up in the ICE wrapper to look like actual programs. And let's open one and see what it looks like. Uh oh. Wrong monitor. You love it when that happens. Oh my gosh. I will say that I don't like the small window borders because it's hard to grab. <laughs> but this looks like a native app, but it's actually a website that you're playing this on. So. It does take into account that you have to have an active internet connection in order to use this. And that includes the online user manual that's in here. So the help area online user guide is what you have for help. And if you don't have an active internet connection, you are not getting to this. So hopefully you don't actually get it installed and not have a connection. Now, as far as the other programs are concerned, I have installed a few to do certain things like GIMP and OBS, uh, LibreOffice Writer, because it doesn't come with a uh, an Office program. Although it does come with things like Gmail, Google Drive. Well, I'll tell you what, let's open up ICE and see what it comes with. So by default, this is ICE. This is what it has by default. First person Tetris entanglement. Pixlr is an image viewer that it has. Um, Google Drive, so you have a native Google Drive app, basically, although it's just a wrapper inside of a website. Uh, Gmail, Google Calendar, and the Peppermint Forms, which is a nice feature. And to me, I know it's not the go-to thing, and I know some people don't like that type of running of programs like ice and because there's multiple browsers open and whatnot but i actually think that that should be an option for other distributions i you can install it on other distributions but it just seems to me it should be more widely available all right um you have you're using the linux mint update manager so the only difference with this is uh, you are not 
using the Linux Mint uh, ideas as far as Linux Mint by default only installs level one through three and then the fours and fives are left unchecked. With this, everything is checked. So you're basically getting everything you need to get updated. It also uses the Linux Mint Software Manager, which is not the prettiest software manager ever made, but it is one that is stable and works pretty well. Okay, so it has the featured programs, it has all packages, or you can just search for whatever you need. And obviously the green check means it's installed. Now, it also comes with Synaptic, so that's also installed. Dropbox uh, ICE program is installed. I installed LibreOffice just because I need uh, an Office program. I actually had to open a few documents, so I did put that on. Under graphics, you have uh, Pixlr as a part of it, but you also have the document viewer, and like I said, I installed GIMP. Under internet, you have BitTorrent. Um, I installed Firefox, Google Chrome, and Thunderbird. They were not there. Again, I installed LibreOffice. I installed private internet access, which is my VPN. And under preferences, you are able to see the power of XFCE. So XFCE is, to be honest with you, has not been my favorite desktop. But I will say that it is very customizable, very powerful in allowing you to change whatever you want to change. So it comes with additional drivers. So I was able to get Wi-Fi, NVIDIA, and the micro Intel code st installed immediately with not an ounce of problems. Um, I installed the Adobe Flash Player, and I don't know why I did. Uh, in the install process, it was the checkbox, and I just clicked it. So there, that's why that's installed. And let's see here. What else do we have? We have a Firefox theme lock and also a Thunderbird theme lock as well. And I guess that's for, I don't know exactly what it's for, but I'm assuming that it's for using a certain theme when you're using a dark theme and Firefox and Thunderbird sometimes have trouble with dark themes. So it'll, I guess it allows you to lock the theme so that it doesn't mess Firefox up when you're using a dark theme. Uh, you have the Peppermint Control Center. So here is where you would change your window manager items and also where you would change the border window borders for your system. So there's another place in the system to change the look and feel or the theme of the system but you would also need to come in here and change this and i actually have quite a few themes that i added but you can change your fonts you can change your alignment and like i said xfc is very customizable so you have a ton of options to enable and disable effects transparency everything so it's a very detailed uh powerful uh, desktop. So let's go into the uh, the Peppermint settings panel. And this is where it, it takes over for basically you don't have the normal XFCE settings. You have this is what they give you. Uh, they've customized it to their uh, liking and this is what you get. You get the customized look and feel where you can change your theme. And again, I have installed quite a few themes so you see there's a ton of them here. Colors, you can use your own color scheme if you like. By doing that, you will override the color schemes in your theme itself, but you can do that if you like. So if you want to have a certain theme, but you want to change the colors of certain items for text windows and whatnot, you can do that. The icon theme, it does come with uh, a default icon set, which is Peppermint 7. And I am that I'm not a fan of the of those icons. So I did change it to Obsidian, which I think goes a little bit better. But that's a minor minor issue. Uh, mouse cursors, and again to enable fonts, 
uh, and, you know, anti-aliasing so that you can have smoother fonts. Now, it already does come with the, this enabled. I didn't have to enable this, which is very nice. Um, so it's already set up for you. And then you have your panel preferences, which you can get to when you right click and hit panel and panel preferences, you get to the same place. So going in here, you can change it from one monitor to another. Now I did have to leave it off automatic because it automatically grabs my, my second monitor. So I'm going to leave it on monitor. I have to switch it to monitor two in order to, um, do that, but you can lock the panel or unlock the panel. And I prefer it to be a little bit bigger, uh, as far as the panel goes. So it's kind of small for me. I'm not going to go into customizing it because that would be another whole video, but you can change the transparency of the panel. If you want a transparent panel, which I usually do, and you can add items. So Rob actually has a couple videos on XFCE and how powerful it is to make it look modern over at Linux Quest. So I would suggest you go over to Linux Quest and check out his videos on customizing XFCE for the panel itself and for all of the settings. All right, so it does come with the customized Numic folders. So you can change the actual color of the folders and the style. For wallpapers, it has an awesome set of wallpapers. Very, very nice uh, set. And I don't usually get too excited about wallpapers because I normally change them by default. I change it. Now, you're, what you're seeing is my actual folder. I've actually added my folder to it. So there's a ton more wallpapers in here. Uh, I could be scrolling for hours. But by default, it comes with a great selection of wallpapers. The only thing that it doesn't allow you to do, or at least that I haven't seen it allow you to do it, is to just make it a, a color. Like if you wanted to just have a black background, you would almost have to get a picture of a black background because it doesn't give you an option just to make it a, a solid color. Again, you have your Dropbox area, which I'm not going to be using. Language support and keyboard settings. Under tweaks, and this is very important. So XFCE is very customizable, but sometimes you can overdo it. And sometimes you can customize a panel to the point where you're like, I don't like any of this. I just want to go back to the way it was. And if you remove the panel, you're going to end up losing some of the settings on here because when you add another panel and you add the whisker menu to it, you're getting the generic whisker menu. You're not getting the peppermint enhanced whisker menu with its settings. And what this does is it resets everything back to the default settings. And I heard that some people had trouble with it, but I actually tried it and it set everything back to the way it was. What it does is it asks, it tells you that it's going to log out, log you out and change everything back to the way it's default. I clicked it. I clicked OK. It logged me out. I logged back in and you see I'm back to the default menu panel for Peppermint 8. So it actually worked very well for me. It may not work for everybody, but it worked well for me. And I think that's uh, a very nice feature, especially if you like to customize, you like to tinker, and you maybe tinkered a little bit too much. Not that I would know what, what that is, but you can turn off and on system sounds. Here's your notification settings. So you can, and if you'll notice, there's a, there's a uh, transparency to the background windows. So the main window will not have transparency, but if you drag it, it will, and any background window will have transparency. That's a user preference. If you like that or don't like that, you can turn that off as well, uh, or you can lighten it up. I think depending on the wallpaper you use, it may be good or bad. All right, so you have Deconf Editor. You have auto mount settings for drives. Software and update settings where you can actually uh, manage your PPAs if you have put any in there. I not tried the enable system hibernation, so I don't know what to tell you on that one. Here is your properties for Flash Player. Under hardware, you have printers, sound, the monitor for your resolution. Here are your shortcut to additional drivers. This was also pretty cool. Uh, the audio equalizer. 
so you can actually put an equalizer on the sound as you're like if right out from the get-go without having to do it through a program um, power manager under network you have the network manager Bluetooth Bluetooth adapter properties firewall here is the Firefox theme lock and Thunderbird theme lock Samba shares you can change your user groups or add a user time and date the startup application so for example for whatever you want to be starting up now I unchecked a few of these that I didn't think I needed and left a few on that I did need if you want to add some to it you would just add the command here and hit add laptop mode I'm not sure what that does or what uh, that is for but it's there <laughs> and you have your core applications for uh, what is going to manage each individual item like power manager they use the XFCE power manager Nemo is the file manager and I actually like that choice because I think Nemo is a very capable file manager and it looks good to boot so it has everything you need by default uh, including open as root hidden hidden joke there but <laughs> Um, so that is the peppermint settings panel and there are other preferences that you can get to like each one separately by typing in the whisker menu so you don't have to come into the actual peppermint settings panel to get to them uh, so it's pretty like I said XFCE is very nice very customizable the only thing that I will say about XFCE is it's probably just not for me because even though when I tweak and customize it, I can't get it to look the way I want it to look. And even though you can get it to look somewhat modern, it just never makes it over that edge, over that hump for me uh, with shadows and different things like that to make it look what I want the desktop to look like. But overall, Peppermint has been running pretty darn stable. I've installed it on family computers and it's been working great and those people love it. So I will say that this is one good operating system to choose, especially for older hardware. Um, it is lightweight and it depends on the user, I guess, because some people will not like the fact that it you know, has a lot of ice programs in it and they want actual programs but you can install those if you want them the point I'm trying to make is you have a great base to start with okay so you have a quick fast lightweight desktop to run that already has ice programs installed and if you choose not to use them or choose to even uninstall them or remove them that's great but you're still left with the stable fast lightweight desktop and I think that's a great thing. So what do you think about Peppermint? Peppermint 8 to be exact. I think it's one great distro. So let me know in the comments below and we'll have a discussion about it. Is it for everybody? Maybe not. Is it for me? Probably not. But it is definitely one good operating system. So until next time, Big Daddy out.